It looks like I can't get anything in focus today. Well, if you're experiencing one of these days, then you clicked on the right video because today I'm going to show you the quickest and easiest method to bring blurry photos back into focus. Now, first of all, I just wanted to say that I completely understand. You get back from a photo shoot, you go through the photos and you find the perfect shot. You know what I'm talking about, the photo where just everything falls into place. The lighting is perfect, the angle is perfect. But wait a minute, why am I not in focus? I've been in these situations more times than I would like to admit. Mostly because I'm shooting wide open all the time with the Sigma 18 to 35 mm f1.8 arc lens. That was a mouthful. This lens is already infamous for missing focus and shooting wide open doesn't really help the situation. Now I know I could update the lens using a Sigma dock, but I don't have the dock and I mean updating a lens, it's a brave new world we're living in. But anyways, I digress. Today I'm going to show you how you can fix photos where you missed focus. So let's pull up one of my photos where I actually missed focus. How embarrassing. And here it is. Uh, by the way, I did not edit this photo before shooting this video. And now taking a look at the photo, it looks really bad to be honest. The focus is way off. I mean, take a look at my face. There's no detail whatsoever. I'm just a blur. And honestly, I think Something like this would be the absolute limit of this method. Oh, and by the way, this method works really well for social media. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, anywhere where you upload a photo and it's compressed. And also the photos are viewed on a phone, so you can get away with a lot more. Now, if you're doing a photo shoot for a client or if you want to print out the photo, or put it in your portfolio, I would not recommend using this method because there are drawbacks, but more about that in a minute. So anyway, let's try to fix this photo. So the first thing, just edit the photo as you would normally. Now I'm going to throw on one of my LUTs, the Moody AF <laughs> LUTs. Uh, by the way, if Photoshop is not really your jam, you can use Lightroom and after you edited the photo, right click on the image and choose edit in Photoshop. Either way, we're going to end up in Photoshop. Now, this method takes only a couple of minutes and let me walk you through. So the first thing you will want to do is copy the background layer. Command J or Control J, depends if you're running Windows or uh, iOS. So now we have two layers and we want to sharpen one of these layers. So we're going to go to Filter, Other, and we're going to choose High Pass. This window will pop up where everything is gray. And if you adjust the radius, you will see that more and more detail uh, comes into the image. Now, you don't really have to worry about the radius, because I'm going to show you how you can adjust uh, the intensity of this filter afterwards. I would say, go somewhere where you start to see the details, and then go a bit overboard. Somewhere about 4.9 looks nice for this photo. Now, you're left with this gray, weird looking photo, but don't worry, we're just where we want it to be. The next thing you want to do is choose one of the blending options, which is called linear light. And now everything is sharpened. So we want to sharpen only the parts of the photo which were out of focus. So to do that, we're going to use a layer mask. Click here and we need to invert the layer mask. We can do that by pressing Command I, Control I, and now we are left with the background layer. So to bring back in focus the parts of the photo that you want, use the brush tool, make sure that the foreground is white, and just paint away, paint away over the parts of the image that you want to be sharpened. And as you can see, my face is getting back in focus. Well, it looks like that. And the jacket is back in focus and everything just looks sharp. Everything looks the way it was supposed to look. Now, as you can see that as I'm painting over myself, uh, there is also noise introduced into the image. And this is the big drawback that I was talking about. Since you're sharpening essentially blur, you're also sharpening noise. So you would not want to use this method for low light photography, where you are already pushing your camera's ISO to the limits. And you don't want to use this method for any photos where there's already quite a bit of noise. Coming in from the future, I'm editing the video right now and I realized that, well, I forgot to tell you guys how to decrease the intensity of the sharpening filter. Uh, it's really simple, all you need to do is go above the layers and you will find a slider which is called fill. Adjusting the slider will adjust the intensity of the sharpening filter. And that's pretty much it. So I'm finishing up the painting and let's take a look how it looks before and after. 
I think we did a pretty good job. So yeah, this is it. I hope this video helped you and if it did, leave a like, subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos and I will see you guys in the next video.